new concept coming to your high school, well, when it comes to sports, so-called fairness doctrine in trans athletics. Much like diversity, equity, and inclusion is dying because it's not fair, teenage boys competing against teenage girls isn't working these days. For example, this 100-meter dash race in Connecticut. As expected, it is Miller and then Smith. Oof, 11, 6, 4. She just broke her own state open Yikes. record. Yikes. A transgender athlete, Terry Miller, dominated the comp competition, and that's not a surprise. But there could be a change on the horizon. A federal appeals court now says four biological women can sue to keep biological men out of girls' high school sports. And we weren't talking about a federal appeals court in Texas, but the appeals court in Manhattan, relatively speaking, a liberal appeals court. And this couldn't come at a more important time. In 23 states, state laws ban transgender students from participating in sports consistent with their gender identity. Okay. But soon, a Biden administration ban on bans will take effect. Never mind the fact that an overwhelming majority of Americans don't support boys playing against girls. That's why Chelsea Mitchell is taking a stand. She's now a college track athlete and with us tonight, along with her lawyer, Christiana Kiefer, senior counsel at the Alliance Defending Freedom. Uh, Christiane, good to start with you. Um, am I right to point out that this is a Manhattan federal court of appeals, not, say, Texas, that, that's issued this now ruling? Certainly. This is the Second Circuit Court of Appeals in downtown Manhattan. And even they recognize that Chelsea and these other female athletes across the state of Connecticut have been injured. They deserve to have their day in court. They deserve to make their full case under Title IX. So we at Alliance Defending Freedom are really excited to move forward with this lawsuit. All right. So, Chelsea, you're now running college track. Um, Look, there's a lot of money involved here uh, in terms of how much scholarships are worth. You think about uh, private schools, they can be fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a year out of state. State schools can be just as much. How, if you're running college track now, were you injured? Well, back in high school, I raced against two biological males, um, all four years of high school. And over those four years, those two males took multiple medals, podium spots, um, and eventually four state championships for myself um, and from plenty of other girls. And so I never knew how my college prospects were injured because of those um, losses. Look, you know, even though you have the same times, it's hard to not be the state champion when you're competing for scholarships against other state champions. Uh, Christiana, though, I think about this in terms of track and field. Um, there's not really a, a chance of physical injury, but then you think about uh, comparing times, right? A mile, uh, women are 46 seconds slower, best men's time, 401 versus 446. 100 meters, women's 1150, uh, 11 seconds, 0.5, men 10.48. 400 meter, women's 52.67, men's 45. I mean, these are the, these are the records at the high school level um, in Connecticut. But then you think about other sports, right? We think about volleyball. Um, where men spike the ball a lot harder. Um, you think about lacrosse, the average men's speed shot, 75 to 85 miles an hour, the average woman, 40 miles an hour, just totally different sports. How is there going to be the difference between the argument of what's fair in terms of running track and whether biological men have an advantage versus what's safe playing a 14-year-old girl versus an 18-year-old boy on a lacrosse field? Well, clearly both are at play when we're talking about why we even have women's sports as a separate category. You know, males have a 10 to 50 percent performance advantage over female athletes. And as you rec rightly recognize, there's a safety component. We saw a young woman in North Carolina who received a concussion from a male's volleyball spike. And even more recently in Massachusetts, a young woman had her teeth knocked out in field hockey because she was competing against a male athlete. So there are certainly safety components as well in contact sports. Are you seeing a tide changing here? Absolutely. We're seeing the vast majority of the American public recognize that it is unfair and it's unsafe to force young women like Chelsea to compete against male athletes. That's the whole reason we have women's sports as a separate category. And it's been really exciting mm -hmm. to see more and more young women really find their voice and begin to speak out on these issues. Speaking of speaking out, for lack of a better term, uh, Chelsea, you've been on college cam a college campus, typically a fairly liberal place, uh, and at the same time involved in this lawsuit. And I'm wondering um, if you've gotten harassed, punished in some way, ostracized by, uh, shall we say, the more liberal members of your campus who aren't, aren't happy about the stand you've taken. 
I mean, I've definitely had my fair share of backlash both in high school and in college, but I really just focused on those that support me. I mean, we've created such a movement since we filed this lawsuit four years ago. And so it's just really exciting to see um, that finally like come to play. Yeah, well, you, you said you've started a movement and indeed you both have. Thank you. Uh, come back and talk to us about it. The next stop would be the Supreme Court. We'd be fascinated to see what happens. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.